Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects Extend Script Quick Tip Tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a script with 40 lines of code that will automatically edit your video uh, for you. Now essentially, the script is going to consist of just pressing a button, and when we press this button, we can then select a folder with all of the things we want to edit together. This can be images, photos, video, whatever you decide, and you can customize it in the script. So if I select, say, my example videos folder here and click on OK, it's then going to run the script, import them into a composition, and create a video for us. Now this is a very rudimentary video editor, of course, and the rest you can go in and adjust more, but this will, in just a few seconds, take any folder you give it and put together all of the elements, and you can go in and customize the order of which they're applied to, the effects, the scale, and completely expand this as much as you want. So this is a quick tip tutorial, so I'm going to be going relatively quick today, and uh, we're just going to open up a new JavaScript file to get started. With our UI open here, we can go ahead and use that as a reference to recreate the actual UI. So all we need is a window with uh, edit video text as well as a button that says edit video. So I'll create a variable called main window and set this equal to a new window. The type of window this is gonna be is a palette window. The name of the window is gonna be edit video. And then for the size, we're just gonna say undefined so it will automatically calculate it. And then we just are going to add a button. So we'll say edit button is equal to, we're gonna add this to our main window element. And what we're gonna do is say add. And the first argument we need to add is the type of element. So we're gonna add a button. And then we're going to put the size and position of the button, which we don't really know yet. So we'll just say undefined. And then the text for inside of our button, will say edit video. All right, and now simply enough to uh, see what's going on here, we'll say main window, our big box window here, and we'll say center. We'll center in the middle of the screen, and then I'll hit control or command D to duplicate that line of code and change center to show. So now if I make sure I'm connected to After Effects or if you're connected to Extend Script, you can press F5 and now see that we have our script UI complete. I wanted to, of course, get that out of the way very quickly because it's very easy. Now we want to move on to the main code. In order to actuate some code, we need to have something detect when we click on this button. So I'm going to take my variable for the button and say dot on click. When I click on it, run some code, which I'm about to tell it. In order to do the running code, we're going to enclose this in just an anonymous function, meaning when we click on this, it's going to run this function or whatever is within our curly brackets here. So what we want to do is a couple of things. We want to be able to shuffle the order of our layers, and we also want to be able to just have a thing that uh, creates our video. So these are two custom functions we're going to set up in a minute, and this one is going to take in all of the imported items, basically the layers or items you bring into uh, After Effects, and shuffle them around or reverse them, whatever you choose, in order to give it some randomization. And then our create video will basically do all of the setup to create the video. But before we can do either of these, we need to get something to shuffle and something to create the video with. So to do this, we need to do some importing things. Uh, in order to do this, we're going to have a file dialog when we click on this to bring up some folder selection. And before we do all this, I want to enclose all of this inside of an app.begin undo group. And I'm just going to call this auto edit. And then I'm going to close that off by saying app.end undo group. And anything I put between these two lines of code, I can easily run it and then press undo to undo everything. So if I have a bunch of operations inside of here, instead of having to press undo 100 times, I can press it once and then quickly get back to coding and editing. So in order to import a folder or file in After Effects, we need to have an object that represents that. So I'm gonna create a variable called folder. And I'm just gonna set this equal to a new folder. We haven't defined anything yet. We're gonna have the user actually select what folder we want and then set that equal to our folder variable. So the way in extend script that we can get a folder input is by grabbing our folder object and then saying is equal to itself dot select. And then you can see it brings up our options for a select dialog or select DLG. I honestly like the look of select DLG because it's much more simplistic. And now what I'm gonna do is put in a prompt, just some text to tell the user, please select your footage uh, slash images folder. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and below our folder object, I want to make sure we're getting something. So I'm just going to alert the name and I'm also just going to comment these out. 
I'm gonna run the script and press edit video. And when I go in to select a folder, we're now gonna get the name of the folder we selected. That's just to make sure that we're actually getting in there. So now that we have our folder, we're gonna say if our folder dot exists, basically if there's a valid folder that the user has selected, what we wanna do is uh, have another variable called files, and these are gonna be all of the files in that folder. In order to get those files, we're going to refer to our folder variable and say dot get files with parentheses because it's a method. This will run through and get every single file in the folder, including other folders as well. All right, I'm gonna create a variable called imported items. Um, it's gonna be an array because this is going to contain each of the pieces of footage or images we import into the project panel here. And then we're gonna take those imported items and we're gonna shuffle them as we mentioned before, and then using that the shuffled items, we're going to also create video with them. So now we need to fill up this imported items variable with some imported items. So now that we have our files, we checked if our folder exists, and if it does, we're gonna get all of the files in it. All right, so now in order to import these files, we're going to create a for loop. You could create a separate function for this, but I'm just gonna do it within here and um, say var i is equal to zero because any array we create, in this case, um, the files starts at zero. So then we wanna say i is less than our files.length and increment i by one. This is the easiest way to just go through all of these files one by one. And each time we go through them, what do we want to do? We want to add them to our imported files array, and but we also want to import them so they're already inside of our project. So in order to do this, we're gonna first put an if statement. We don't want to just import anything because say we had a folder and it had subfolders inside of it. Well, we don't want to import folders. We just want to import footage, images, or whatever we choose. So we need to put some filters in this if statement. And if the filter is true, we'll take our imported items and we're going to push whatever uh, our imported code is here. And now each time we check a file and we check a certain case if it's true, we're going to push it into this imported items array. But when we push it, we need to uh, actually import at the same time. So I'm gonna say app for into After Effects dot project, the current project open, and import file. And import, and, and inside the import file, we need to have an import options object. So I'll create a new import options. And inside of here, it requires a file. Now, usually you'd have to type in file and then some of this and type in the location. Now that's, that's fine, but what we actually have already is an array of variables we're going through called files. So we'll say files i, the current file we're on, and we're gonna import that. So once again, we're gonna loop through all the files and each time we find a certain case, we're going to push it into the variable here so we can keep track of it later, but we're also at the same time going to import it into our After Effects project into the project panel here. So what is the case we're gonna check for? Well, first thing, I don't wanna import folders. And the second thing is I might want to filter out certain types of files. I may not want MOV files, I may not want MKV files. There may be certain things to avoid, or if there's more things to avoid, uh, not avoid than to avoid, it's easier just to put in the cases we want. So in each of these checks here, I'm going to take our files i dot name, and we're gonna check if the name has something in it. In order to do that, we're gonna say dot index of, and in order to check if the index of something has a value in it, we just put in the text here. So if I wanted to check if this was a PNG file, I could say if the index of dot PNG is not equal to negative one, then I know it's a PNG file. Because if I take the name of something, check if it contains PNG, the index is not gonna be negative one. What I'm saying by the index of negative one, if it was equal to it, that means it doesn't contain. Net does not equal to negative one in index form, means it does contain. So I can continue on and uh, put this in a few more times and just change the extension to say uh, MP4. And I can add in another case and say mp3, and let's add in one final case. I'm gonna say if the file.name.index of dot does not equal negative one, meaning does this, does this name of the file have a dot in it, meaning does it have an extension? So we pretty much wanna only include those kind of things. So now if I go ahead and run the script, press edit video, and go in to select a folder, 
click on OK. You can see we're not getting very far, so let's see where we're stopping. One thing I like to do is just add a couple of right lines. So let's see how far we can go now. We get A, B, and D. So it looks like it's totally skipping over our files. So what I think I'll do is just get rid of if the folder exists and just assume it exists. And then now if I run it, choose a folder. Okay. Why is it doing this? <laughs> files I folder.get files imported items dot push. So I just made the dumbest mistake and I've spent a bunch of time trying to solve it. Um, if you've been looking for the same mistake, what I've done wrong is inside of my if statement, instead of using the or logic, I use the and. So what I was telling the script is that the file has to have PNG and MP4 and MP3 and not be a folder. So that was just really giving it some problems. And uh, I think now if we run it, we should be good. Let's click edit video, select a folder and load it. All right, sweet. Now we're getting the files to import. Let's go ahead and now shuffle them up and then create our video real quick. So I'll uncomment these functions and now go down to create them. I'll create a function called shuffle order. And we're just gonna call everything we bring in called the items. We're also gonna create one called create video where we also have our items. Now, in order to shuffle our items, we can do it in however we want. You could reverse the order of them. You can randomize the shuffle. What we're gonna do is randomize it. So I'm going to do a for loop through my items here. So say var i is equal to zero. For i is less than our items.length, go up by one each time through. So what I'm actually gonna do is, instead of going from the bottom of the array up to the top, I'm gonna start at the top and go to the bottom. So I'm gonna set var i equal to our items.length minus one. And we're gonna go from i is greater than or equal to zero and decrement i by one each time through. Then we're gonna create an arbitrary variable called j, which is gonna be a randomization. And we're gonna set this equal to math.floor. And then in parentheses there, we're gonna say math.random with parentheses for that. And then we're gonna multiply the math.random by i plus one. And essentially what this means is create a random number between i, which is the current index of our array, and one, which will essentially just randomize where the current index was and put it somewhere else. And now that we have j, which is representative of what that index is gonna be when it inserts it, we'll just create a variable called temp to hold it temporarily and say items i. And then we're gonna say our items i, which is the current index we're on, is gonna be equal to our items j, which is we'll randomize it quite a bit. And then since we're looping back around, we're gonna grab our items j, which is our new value, and set that equal to our temp. So essentially what this will do is each time through, start at the top of the array of footage and make its way down to the bottom. Each time through, what it's gonna do is choose a random number along that array of values. There could be five pieces of footage, so it's gonna choose a random number between one and five. And then it's gonna say, okay, we're on the fifth piece of footage, we've chosen a random number, say it's two. Now we're gonna put it into the two area and start, start swapping around different indices just like that. And that will allow you to randomize the order of things. You may want it to be in alphabetical, you may want it to be reverse. You can always change it inside of this shuffle order function. And then lastly, the big bit of code is to create our video. So the first thing we need to create a video is the composition to put it in. So I'm gonna create a variable called comp and set this equal to our app.project. And we're going to refer to the items and add a comp. Now the add comp takes several arguments, the first of which is the comp name. Then we have the width, the height, the pixel aspect ratio, the duration, which I'm gonna to set to something rather high because we're going to assume they're importing lots of footage. We can always cut it back later. And then finally, we'll have the frame rate, we'll say 30. And then at the very end of our create video, what I'm gonna say is uh, comp.open in viewer. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna create this comp in the background, start adding all of our layers and doing that, and then at the very end, open it up. Because if we open it up first and then have to start uh, seeing the visuals of it, adding the layers, having to refresh the viewer and everything, that will actually take longer for our script to run. So there's two variables I'm going to initialize here. One of them is gonna be called layers, which is an array, which is gonna contain all of the items over here that are gonna be brought into our comp. We're also gonna have one called start, 
and it's gonna be the start time. So let's just call it start time, set it equal to zero, because the first piece of footage needs to go in at zero seconds. Now we're gonna loop through our items here, and remember our items have now been shuffled and brought into the create video function. So we're gonna say var i is equal to zero. We're gonna start at the bottom this time, and for i is less than our items dot length, increment i by one. So we're gonna go through all of the items here that we've shuffled up, and for each time through, we're gonna grab our layers, uh, or empty array we created, and what we're gonna push is basically a function which will import the layer into the composition. So I'm gonna say layers.push comp.layers. So we're in the layers section of our composition and we wanna add this item. So we're gonna say is add, we're gonna add the current item or item i. So it's gonna just take um, all of our empty layer right here and each time through add our imported layer. The next step is uh, optional. I'm not sure why I actually did it in the original script, but I set each of the layers to selected equals true. I think this was just to create a visual of the elements that had been processed. But uh, yeah, just grab the current index i of layers and set it to true for selected. And then the main guts of this is we need to set the start time. So I'll say layers i dot start time. And we again already have a variable up here for it starting at zero. So we'll set it equal to that. But the next time through our start time needs to be increased to accommodate for the footage we just uh, added. So what we'll do is say start time, and our start time is gonna be equal to the difference, or basically the length of the previous clip. So our start time is gonna be equal to plus itself equal to our layers i dot out point minus our layers i dot in point, which will essentially give us the duration of the clip uh, given that it is cut or not in the composition. And then lastly, what we need to do is modify our composition so it's the right length for all of these pieces of footage we've just imported. Originally it was 360 seconds. Let's shorten it a bit. The way I'm gonna do this is just say our comp.work area duration, and we need to give it a number of seconds to uh, change the work area duration to. The way I'm gonna do this is grab all of our layers, um, and I'm gonna grab the very last layer. So layers.length minus one, referring to itself, and it's out point. So whatever the last layer was, the out point, that's where our work area duration is gonna end. And then we're gonna open up that composition. So hopefully now everything should work. Looks like we are missing a parentheses. And let's click on edit video. And I'll load up this folder right here. And as you can see, it looks like we have our imported stuff. So it looks like we didn't quite get to this code right here. Let's see why. Ah, it's because instead of uh, putting parentheses to set the value, I need to set an equal sign. And again, remember we did this app.begin undo group, so I can just click Control Z and undo everything. I'll rerun the script, select a folder, click on OK, and now it's going to load up with all of our footage here placed in an edited form as we made it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's video. That's how you can edit video in 40 lines of code using Extend Script and After Effects. Um, you can always go in and customize these shuffle functions and create video functions to start layering things on top of it and create more unique and creative looks. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you're here for some free code, go down to GitHub where you can check out all this code and some more cool projects that I release. But again, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.